terror is coming up. You see how they're messing around with this cloning stuff and mm -hmm. fooling around with the food? Mm -hmm. The Honorable, I heard him. I'm not the only one. Mother Tanetta heard it. The minister heard it. I know others heard it. A lot of us heard it. I heard it. A lot of those who heard it are not around right day, but now, but I heard him say it. That they will, that in your window will come on, in, in, in windows of some people. That all I wish is to terrorize. Would be something with an insect body, and you know, though none of us in this room want to get too close to insects. You do not have insects as a pet. A few Muslims want to have a dog, but you don't want an insect as a pet, am I right? right? They're so far away from how you see things and what you like, what you consider beautiful, that you don't want nothing to do with it. Now imagine an insect body about three, four, five feet tall, eight, nine feet tall, and a human face on it, mm -hmm. looking at you, trying to get in your, your house. That's coming up, by the help of Allah, is we were taught by the Honorable Raja Muhammad about life on Mars nearly, I mean, I wasn't here, but nearly 70 years ago. That's not new to those who've heard what he has said. It's also not new that he said nearly 70 years ago that Allah would produce monster-like creatures that would terrorize the wicked. At a certain point, when the chastisement comes down in full, that would be one of the factors producing the chastisement. And he talked about these big five, four, five, six foot insect bodies. You know, insects, are, you don't like them. There's something about insects, you just don't like them. But you really, you'd be scared to death of a big one. Three, four, five feet tall with a human face on it. That would frighten the hell out of you, wouldn't it? Regardless of the face, regardless of even how kind the face might look. That would be a hell of an experience coming around in your house. You hear some kind of scratch on your window or door, you open the door and there comes this monster. Something that you saw on TV, now it's real. Insects. It's one of those angels that got control over the insects. Where the insects can come up in such terrific numbers and just terrify you. Yes. Oh yes. They got killer bees. Killer ants. Now they set some kind of a roach that they found here in the valley somewhere. Poison roach. Tarantulas. Bone weevils. Grasshoppers. Praying mantis. White is season. And then the Bible says, and I heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say that Allah may make new creatures. Terrible looking creatures. With human heads and wings. I mean, look to terrify the hell out of the people. Kingman, Arizona, May 1953. At the height of the Cold War, an unidentified object reportedly crashed in the desert sands. What remained was allegedly sent to America's most top secret facility, Area 51. But it wasn't until 45 years later, in 1998, that a retired military engineer named Bill Uhouse came forward to make a stunning claim. The military didn't just have the extraterrestrial technology, they had an actual living alien. Uhouse claimed that he worked in a, a secret laboratory, supposedly in the Papoose Mountains of Area 51 in Nevada, and that since 1953, the American government had an insectoid alien that was working with them. His name was J-Rod. J-Rod supposedly assisted the military in understanding and duplicating the incredible power systems and futuristic technology that was combined and created for the Kingman craft. Shortly after Bill Uhouse broke the story, microbiologist Dan Burrish came forward to confirm his claim. But according to Dan Burrish, J-Rod claimed that he was not an alien. What he revealed was something even more shocking. This insectoid alien, uh, J-Rod, said that he had actually come from our future. 
and that at some time in the near future to us, there is a catastrophe on this planet. And much of mankind is destroyed. And that mankind splits into two different species. And one of these species goes and lives underground. And while underground, they develop these insectoid traits. Which is exactly what the Hopi and Zuni and even Navajo legends say. That during the transition period between the third and the fourth worlds, this above world of today was not habitable. And they had to go underground and live for some time with what they called the ant people. And you have to wonder if perhaps J-Rod is actually an insectoid human being from our own future. Could the accounts of J-Rod confirm that the Hopi stories of ant people were more than just mythology? And if the so-called insectoids really do exist, is it possible that they are not aliens, but humans from the future? But they are afraid of panic. They're afraid because they don't control us any longer. They're afraid because we don't fear them any longer. They're afraid because they have failed us. Whenever you talk about UFO or extraterrestrial involvement, they bug out. They panic because it says that they're not in control. It says they might be a benevolent or malevolent force that is greater than them. That their, pe their beings might be coming here from other galaxies or other planets. So they say, oh, that's hogwash, right? And then they spell a billion dollars on a project called SETI. Oh, ain't no extraterrestrials. We just gonna go to Puerto Rico and we're gonna build the biggest satellite in the world and watch anyway for 25 years. But there's no such thing as flying saucers. That's crazy. Ain't no such thing as extraterrestrials. We just gonna sit here and watch day and night and listen every day, every hour to see if we can get a voice. We're gonna set up messages to out, outer space. Every year, they send a new package to outer space. But, SETI, or the Pentagon says what? When you say there's UFOs or extraterrestrials, you mean little green men? Finally tonight, the eclipse and the legend of what happened on a Kentucky farm are about to collide. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandow. Blink and you might miss Kelly, Kentucky. But now a cosmic coincidence is putting this community of just 300 at the dark center of eclipse frenzy. It's all happening on the 62nd anniversary of the night in 1955 when aliens supposedly terrorized a family farmhouse. Geraldine Sutton Stith's father was there. It affected all of them. My Uncle JC couldn't even hold down a job after that. Um, and Dad, I mean, he didn't want to talk about it. Investigators never found any proof. One suggested the aliens arrived in a bottle of Kentucky moonshine. But the story made Kelly famous, inspiring UFO enthusiasts and even Steven Spielberg when he made E.T. <laughs> Kelly is hoping to cash in on the eclipse with the Little Green Men Days Festival. We're raffling off a Mitsubishi Eclipse car. Raising money to build their first ever community center. And during that two minutes, 40 seconds of darkness, some wonder if just maybe those aliens might come back. I'll have my little glasses on. I'm going to be like, okay, I'll try to watch. Okay, okay, you know, <laughs> they're not here yet, are they? Normally, just a few thousand people show up here, but this time they expect 20,000. And perhaps a few more. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Kelly, Kentucky. Our special eclipse coverage tomorrow. I'm Tom Yamas in New York. Have a great evening.